So uh, Susan, you you write about motivation. You talk about motivation a lot. Um, can you give me an illustration of how uh, what you've learned about motivation is able to be put into practice? Yeah, you know what? Um, I have motivation conversations with people all the time, including myself. And the last story in my book is how I I shifted my motivational outlook for going through security at the airport. But I think what I want to share with you today <laughs> Um, I'm going to put my husband on the spot. Uh, his name is Drea, and he decided that he wanted to lose weight. And so the question I asked him was why? You know, why do you want to lose weight? And what he discovered by just answering that question was that he had a self-identity. as He saw himself as an athlete. He'd always been very, very athletic. He's now 77 years old. And so as you get older, um, you're limited. You must have married a baby. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, we're 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 right up there together. All right, um, all right, I should be all right. retired, Dan. I should I should be retired. But at any rate, um, uh, so you know the the the, the athletic um, aspect of his life is 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 challenging, and so he said, "I want to lose weight because I want to be more more of who I think I am. I want I want to be better able to to be the the person I identify myself as." which I thought was really intriguing. And that's one of the optimal motivational outlooks is the integrated motivational outlook where you're doing it for self-identity. And so um, he started going to one of those weight loss plans. And, and so what I would do at, at the end of every week after he went in and did the weigh-in and all that kind of stuff is I would ask him those three sets of questions. And I would say, okay, you know, Dre, what choices did you make this week? And he would say, he'd get so excited. He would say, you know, I chose to eat a hamburger without the bun, but it was wrapped in lettuce. And, um, and I chose to only have the French fries filled up halfway. Um, you, you know, I pay for the whole thing, but I just tell them to make it half full. And I said, oh, that's cool. So you're feeling good about those choices. He goes, yeah, I felt, I was full. I felt really good. I go, okay, so like, what did you learn? Uh, excuse me. I, I said, um, what meaning did you make from that? What, you know, how is this meaningful to you? And what's interesting was that every week I would ask him the same questions. And then one day he said, you know what I realized? He says that as I was doing this, I realized I am learning things and doing things that will make a, a difference to me being a grandfather. Hmm. Um, he now has three grandchildren. We have three grandchildren. And he was like, I want to be a better role model. So what I'm taking from this is that the better I get at this, the, the better role model I'll be. And I'm going to be around longer for, for our grandchildren. And it gave him a whole other depth of meaning for doing what he was doing. Um, aligned with his values and sense of purpose. And then I would ask him every week, okay, what did you learn? And like one time he said, I learned that red onions um, have less calories than white onions. So whenever I order an omelet or something, I'm going to, I'm going to order red onions. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I said, why, why are they less caloric? And he goes, I don't know. He's, I'm going to have to find out. So of course that was the first question he asked the next week. And, and he came back and you know, I said, what did you learn? He goes, I learned that red onions have less sugar content than white onions and yellow onions. And that's why they're less caloric. And now, I mean, just this past Sunday, you know, we got omelets and he asked, you have red onions? You know, so it's, it's just, um, it seems so basic and simple, but I have used these questions in motivation conversations with high level executives and within minutes, seeing them totally shift their motivational outlook for doing expense reports or networking or, or doing analytics, um, whatever it is they needed to do because they found their sense of choice, connection, and competence were being uh, stimulated through those questions. And, and, one, and one final thing that I'd like to say is that what these questions do is they provide a mindful moment that neuroscience has shown that when our psychological needs for choice, connection, and competence are being satisfied, it lights up the same part of our brain as when we're in a mindful state. So the greatest way to become mindful is to have our psychological needs satisfied to create choice, connection, and competence. And the greatest way to experience choice, connection, and competence is to be mindful. The reason I love these questions, and they've been developed by literally, I've traveled around the world, literally around the world, and tested these questions in every culture I can imagine in various languages. And I'm, I'm convinced that the reason they work is because they get to the essence of why you're doing what you're doing, create a, a space to be mindful, and then you suddenly are able to get a very different perspective about your goal, the bad habit, 
whatever it is you're trying to um, take control over or to master. Fantastic. So I've been talking with Susan Fowler and her, her new book is Master Your Motivation. Um, stop what you're doing right now and go buy it. So <laughs> thank you so much, Susan. Thank you, Dan. I really enjoyed it.